Hey, y'all, I'm going to derive the Helmholtz energy equation, and it's going to be sweet. It's a pretty sweet derivation. It's short, and I'm going to give you a significant amount of detail so that you feel like pretty good about this derivation. So let's jump into it. First thing we're going to do is start off with one of my favorite laws, which is the second law of thermodynamics. It says that the total entropy change, uh, this is in differential form, has to be greater than zero. Now, the total entropy change is comprised of the change in the entropy of the surroundings plus the system, and that has to be greater than zero for the process to be spontaneous. So if it's greater than zero, the process is spontaneous. Now, another fundamental equation we're going to use is the thermodynamic definition of entropy change. So ds has to be greater than dq over t for a real process and equal to for a reversible process. Now, for the surroundings, the entropy change of the surroundings equals dq, so the heat transferred to the surroundings divided by temperature. Now, what's lost to by the surroundings in terms of heat transfer has to come from the system, right? So ds of the surroundings equals negative dqs of the system. So that's just heat transferred from the system is going into the surroundings. It's equal and opposite. Uh, from here, we're going to use the uh, first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. And we're going to assume two assumptions here, that volume is constant in our process, and we're allowing for pressure volume work only. So if this is the case, then our internal energy change in differential form equals dq. And we can substitute that into here so that the entropy change of the surroundings equals negative du over t. Okay, so we can substitute this in to our second law. So here, this ds surroundings, same thing right here. I will substitute that in to our second law. So this must be true, greater than zero for the process to be spontaneous. And we're going to multiply both sides by negative t to get d du minus TDS. It has to be less than zero. Now, we're going to introduce the Helmholtz energy. And we're going to define Helmholtz energy as equal to the internal energy minus temperature times the entropy. I'm going to use A, uh, but you may use it as F. I see various symbols for Helmholtz energy. Uh, I'm just using A. Uh, if we take the differential form of this equation and assume constant temperature, dA equals du minus TDS. And this, see this, du minus TDS, that's the same as what we have here. So our Helmholtz energy equation, dA equals du minus TDS, and this has to be less than zero for the process to be spontaneous. So if it's negative, if dA is negative, the process is spontaneous, and that's for a process that occurs under constant volume, constant temperature, allowing pressure volume work only, so only expansive work, and in a closed system. Cool. All right, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it. I also got another similar derivation using the Gibbs free energy equation. That's also pretty sweet. And just note, I got tons and tons and tons and tons of other videos on thermodynamics. I know thermo isn't the easiest subject in the world. It's quite hard for many of us, but, and it was for me when I was learning, I, I won't lie. Uh, but you know what? The more problems you do, it's like repetition is key. Just keep going at it. Keep working at it. Keep watching videos and trying practice problems over and over. And you can get it. You can get through the course. Best of luck to you. Good luck on your exams. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.